going to be talking about 10 of the top music video effects for the year 2021. So it's been an interesting year. The trend has definitely changed. I've been making these types of tutorials since 2017, so it's been fun to witness the way that the space has evolved over the past few years. So before we get started, I need to clarify some very important things. First of all, the title says 10 best video effects, but in reality, I want you to look at it in this way. Everything that I'm going to show you is just a different tool that you can use to create your own visual. The number one thing that you have at your disposal that's going to help elevate your game and make better videos is your own individual individual creativity. So don't look at this video as a way to pull different tricks. Think of it as a way to educate yourself on some popular video editing tools that are being used out there and then use your own individual creativity to experiment with those tools and work on creating your own style. That's the best advice I can give for this. Other than that, as always, if you guys are new here, consider subscribing. Leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. Comment below what you'd like to see next. And we're going to hop right into this video after a quick word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that gives you access to pro courses across a wide range of different topics. As someone who is completely self-taught from the internet, I love using Skillshare to educate myself on different editing and 3D workflows. The intro courses really helped me get a good first step in the door. Recently, I've been watching this After Effects Motion Graphics Beast course by Alan Ayobi as a way to learn some new After Effects things. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link at the top of my description. All right, guys, so starting off with number one on our list, this isn't going to be in any order. Again, I just want to give you a good idea of where the scene is at right now. Number one is going to be CRT effects. Now, this has recently become popular through music videos as well as different Instagram visual art. People have figured out ways to experiment with circuit bending, and you've seen a pop-up of a lot of this different glitch box hardware where you're able to change these knobs and get these different analog glitches. Now, there are a few digital things that we are going to mention that does try and get close. If you want the truest look, you're going to need to pick up one of these glitch boxes. If you do a quick Google search, you can find them. Here's a few options. I'll throw them on the screen here. You're also going to need a CRT TV. Connect the glitch box with the TV using your AV cables and then record your screen and bring it back into the editing software. I actually have one right here if you guys want to check it out. Here's some different things I was able to create with that. And I even experimented by making my own. It's very simple. You just need to buy some basic parts off of eBay or Amazon, solder them together and then connect with your TV. I've also made a bunch of different tutorials on ways where you can create that sort of CRT glitch using only After Effects or Premiere. Here's some of the results I was able to get just experimenting within the software. There's also been a pop-up of a lot of different plugins responding to this trend, such as the Signal plugin, which is on AE Scripts. I've been seeing this type of look in a lot of different music videos, so definitely pay attention to that, experiment with it, and see what you can do with it. So number two is going to be smooth motion effects, and this is something that hasn't changed throughout the years, but people have been getting better at it. This could be anything from a transition, any of these transform effects that I'm showing you on the screen here, anything that follows along with the motion of your video and sort of brings it to life more. Recently, the artist Fredo Bang has been blowing up a lot. A lot of his music videos feature this sort of fast paced motion with a lot of motion blur in After Effects. So I'll leave a tutorial below if you want to explore more into that. Some really cool things you can do just using After Effects, just utilizing that motion blur and the transform effect, which is available within Premiere or After Effects. Number three is going to be freeze frames. Now this is something which again has existed since I've been talking about my favorite effects from 2017. Now, the only difference here is how much this effect has evolved over the years. Before, it was more of just a cut and paste. Everyone saw it. It was very overused. But the awesome thing about this is there's so many different ways where you can put a spin on it, either mixing it with transform effects, using it as some sort of transition, or doing something completely unique with it. So if you are going to try this, I've made a ton of different tutorials on it. You guys can pick up some tips from there. My best advice, again, don't keep it stale. Try and experiment with it. Do it in some different way. Mix some of these other things that we're going to mention into there, and you're going to have your video looking a lot more fresh. There's also another thing that you can combine with your freeze frame method, which is the next effect that I want to mention. And this is more so a technique or a setup into a lot of different things, and that is rotoscoping. So you may have heard this a lot over the past few tutorials. Rotoscope version 2, After Effects did a giant update where they have a lot more AI learning technology built into it. It's a lot faster, it has a lot better results, and that allows you to do so many different things with masking. It allows you to apply and stack different effects onto isolated subjects, which is extremely useful. And if you wanna go back to that freeze frame method where you're sort of masking out a frozen subject, instead of masking out a frozen subject, now you can use rotoscoping to mask out a moving subject and still kind of keep the same look. 
So the next thing I want to talk about, this is one of the most exciting things on the list for me personally, is 3D in your music videos. I've been seeing this used a lot more and I think it's a great thing. 3D is one of those things that really has no barriers. Any idea that you have in your head, you can create using 3D. I've been making a lot of tutorials talking about using 3D in your workflow, and I've been seeing a lot more people using 3D in general in their music videos. People are starting to go into different softwares, they're starting to experiment more, and 3D is one of the best tools for doing that. So check out some of my 3D videos. You can use Element 3D, which is a plugin for After Effects, which is probably the best place to start. Another one which is always amazing is Blender, 100% free great community out there, so many different tutorials, and some of the things that I see people doing with Blender just blows my mind. Directors like Gibson Hazard have been a great influence for this, showing what he's able to do with 3D, creating these different unique worlds. Another thing a lot of people don't realize is learning 3D can make you a lot more money, it can give you a lot more opportunity. With the emergence of NFTs, virtual production being used in Hollywood and by indie developers, picking up these skills not only gives you more room with music videos, but it can give you a lot more different pathways to follow, so it is a very useful skill to have especially in this day and age so check it out learn something new it's a very fun learning experience in my opinion next up is going to be distortion this is something that has a very wide range of application because there's so many different ways to apply distortion effects there's things that i've talked about like the displacer plugin which is free where you can add that chromatic displacement map effect you can do things like slit scanning there's so many different ways to distort your footage especially if you're making some sort of trippy style music video there's a lot of different ways to look into it it's evolved throughout the years. Just look back at when data moshing was super big. There's always going to be different ways to distort your footage. So I'm going to put that in that top 10 uses because it still is very common. Notable directors I want to point you to who are making these sort of videos with all this crazy distortion. People like Nighttive, people like Dotcom Nirvan, both of them use different distortion tools to craft their visuals in a very unique way while not keeping it stale and repetitive. So learn from them. Try and find a way to use it where it can stand out and not just look overwashed and ugly. Next up is going to be the DIY look. This is another newer trend in music videos that I've seen. I started noticing the popularity of this rise because of the director Lone Wolf, who really used this DIY style with all these paper rips, all this drawing, all this paint on your videos. And I want to go even further than that and lump in authentic VHS into this DIY group. Taking a VHS camera on set and just getting some B-roll with authentic VHS is a really cool thing to do. You see it in a lot of videos. You can't beat that authentic VHS look. The aesthetic from the 80s and 90s still stands. Now, wrapping back to the DIY, if you have equipment like scanners, like printers, you can print out actual frames of your video, cut it up, add these rips, draw on it. You can scan that back in, bring it to your film editing software to add these DIY looks that you're seeing on the screen. So we're seeing this emergence of people really starting to go out of their way to go beyond just the computer with things like these CRT glitch boxes with these DIY effects. Now, just like with the glitch boxes, there still is a lot of different ways to be able to replicate this with Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects. I made a bunch of videos talking about paint animation just using Photoshop. My last ASAP Rocky PacSun collab tutorial, we talked all about this, about creating paper rips. So you can either take the longer method or you can try and replicate it. It's up to you guys. Just be aware of these tools because you can create some really interesting things. So check out the tutorials down below if you'd like to learn more. So next up, and this is one that's probably been in every top 10 video I've made over the couple years because it's still extremely relevant and that is overlays. The reason why overlays are always in here is because there's so many different uses. You can use overlays just to give some texture to your video, like some grain or some VHS. And side note, if you need any VHS or texture overlays, check out my website link down below. We have a bunch of free ones. But aside the fact, not only can you add simple texture, you can use overlays for complete transitions into the next scene. You can track and composite them into your scene. They're easy to use. You just drag the footage over top of your own footage, change around the blending mode, and you're good to go. So my best advice when it comes to using this method, using this tool, is to create a folder on your computer and collect and save different overlays. I have one called Overlays and Elements, and throughout the years, I've just been adding to that. Whatever I pick up, I just throw it in that folder, and anytime I'm editing something, I can go to that folder and I have all these different assets at my disposal. So next up is going to be animation and this is something that I don't think is used a lot by people but it still remains a powerful tool. 
So looking back at 2017, how this has evolved within music videos, we had that kind of 2018 trend of squiggly line effects, glowing line effects. You saw that in so many different music videos. It started with the old Cole Bennett music videos, and now it's evolved into a little bit more advanced stuff. So again, talking about that DIY animation using Photoshop brushes, I think Photoshop remains one of the better ways to add in animation. One music video director who I think uses animation very well is Pat Banahan. I'll throw some clips on the screen so you can check out what he does. And again, just like 3D, this is a skill in of its own where you can apply animation to get different jobs, not just music video stuff. You can do it commercial wise, design wise. So it remains a very useful thing to learn. And then last on our list, guys, this was also the last thing I mentioned in my 2020 video that is plugins and presets. Plugins and presets allow you to do things that you normally would not be able to do within Premiere, After Effects, whatever. It gives you shortcuts. It saves you time. They're individual tools of their own. So I recommend you look into different plugins and presets. There's new plugins coming out all the time. Just check out aescripts.com. A lot of different creators are creating their own assets. So you guys are having an inflow of a lot of new different things you can use and experiment with. I've seen a lot of different creators use specific plugins and really create their own style just out of that. I'm a big fan of Brickspacer on Instagram. He's a 3D artist from Russia. He's been creating a lot of NFTs and I love how he uses this plugin here. So look into them, combine them into your style and you'll be able to create some unique things. So let me know what you guys thought about this video. If you guys have been doing this for a couple of years, let me know your thoughts on how the scene has evolved. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you like effects in your videos? Do you like more cinematic stuff? If you do like effects, what are some of the ones that you like using the most or you like seeing the most? If you guys enjoy the video, slap a like, comment below what you like like to see next you guys have been asking for a lot more 3d stuff so i want to get into blender c4d and as always thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting and i'll see you guys in the next one